You probably know by now, the Panama Canal is dying. You've seen the headlines, watched the videos. The canal is facing a crisis like never before. Its lifeline, water, is drying. Ships are piling up in long queues waiting for days. Freight costs are skyrocketing and the ripple effects are being felt across global trade. And while Panama fights to stay afloat, other countries see an opportunity. They're racing to capture a piece of the $270 billion worth of cargo that passes through the canal annually and its impressive $4.99 billion yearly revenue by creating their own mega projects. This is the race to replace the Panama Canal. Which mega project will take the ultimate prize and become the next trade route? One thing is certain, it won't go down without a fight. The Panama Canal is one of the greatest engineering achievements in history. Opened in 1914, it connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, cutting weeks off maritime travel and handling about 5% of the world's trade. Before the Panama Canal was built, cargo ships had to take a much longer, more perilous route. For example, a ship from Europe wanting to reach California would have to sail all the way around the southern tip of South America, through the stormy Strait of Magellan, and then head north. This journey could take months. The only other option was the Northwest Passage at the top of the Americas, which was blocked by ice for most of the year, making it impossible. In 1902, the United States decided to do something about it. They proposed building a canal in Central America that would slash the journey by approximately 12,000 kilometers, saving ships weeks of travel. However, constructing the canal wasn't easy. Laborers used dynamite, drills, and steam-powered shovels to move over 200 million cubic meters of earth. Tragically, nearly 6,000 workers lost their lives due to heat stroke, rock slides, and tropical diseases. One of the major engineering challenges was the nearly 30 meter difference in elevation between the highest and lowest points of the proposed canal. To solve this, engineers designed locks and gates that allowed ships to climb and descend through the canal. The total cost of building the canal was around $375 million at that time in 1904. It is equivalent to $12 billion as of today. But despite these challenges, the canal opened in August 1914, and by the end of its first year, around a thousand ships had already passed through. Over time, the number of ships using the canal has steadily increased, and it has become one of the most crucial arteries for global trade. But today, the canal is facing a serious challenge. It's running out of water. This water crisis is threatening the canal's ability to operate and creating ripple effects throughout global trade. Right now, daily transits have been slashed. Normally, around 36 to 38 ships pass through, but that number is now down to 24. To make matters worse, larger ships are forced to carry less cargo due to draft restrictions and shipping costs have skyrocketed. Some routes have seen increases of up to 400%. Gatun Lake, the canal's main water source, is at its lowest level in nearly 60 years, and experts are worried that this might not be a one-time problem. Climate change is making droughts more frequent and severe. But what happens if the Panama Canal can't keep up? The impact would be huge a major hit to global trade and supply chains everywhere. But the crisis isn't just about water. Ships are getting bigger and there are more of them than ever. Can the canal handle the growing number and size of the vessels? Many countries and companies aren't waiting to find out. Across the Americas, new projects are popping up. Can one step up to the task? Let's find out. The first alternative is Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor. It's one of the most advanced options being developed and connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans using a 308-kilometer railway across southern Mexico. Starting at the port of Coatzacoalcas on the Gulf Coast, the rail line stretches to Salina Cruz on the Pacific Coast. Instead of ships sailing directly between oceans, this corridor relies on cargo being unloaded at one port transported across the isthmus by train and reloaded at the other. 
This setup bypasses the long and dangerous journey around South America, offering a faster route, especially during Panama Canal bottlenecks. The project isn't just about a railway. It also includes upgrades to both ports, making it a comprehensive solution. The estimated cost is $7.5 billion, and by 2033, the corridor aims to handle up to 1.4 million TEUs annually. While promising, this corridor won't entirely replace the Panama Canal. It works differently, and its success will depend on how efficiently it can handle the transfer between ships and trains. Still, with Lion Z already operational and proving faster than the canal in some cases, would you say Mexico's interoceanic corridor is ahead in the race? Another contender is Colombia. Although it's being framed as a complement, not a replacement, the South American country is working on an ambitious project to connect its Atlantic and Pacific coasts with a 240km about 149 mile, railway. The route will link the ports of Copica, Jurado and Acandi, cutting across northern Colombia near the Panama border. The railway comes with an estimated cost of $7 to $13 billion and is currently in the feasibility phase. It's also part of a broader national strategy to revive rail infrastructure, with over 1,800 kilometres of railway lines planned for reactivation. However, the challenges are substantial. The route cuts through environmentally sensitive areas, requiring careful consultation with indigenous and Afro-Colombian communities. Critics have pointed to potential financial, topographical and environmental hurdles, with some experts suggesting that the government focus on upgrading existing railway infrastructure instead. Even so, others see the project as feasible, with studies indicating that the construction requirements are not overly complex. With so many challenges, do you think it will at least finish the race? Finally, let's get into Nicaragua's Mega Canal. This is by far the most ambitious and controversial project being proposed as an alternative to the Panama Canal. This massive plan involves building a 278km canal connecting blue fields on the Caribbean coast to Puerto Corinto on the Pacific, crossing Lake Zolotlan along the way. If completed, it would be over three times the length of the Panama Canal and designed to handle the largest ships in the world. The numbers here are staggering. The canal would cost an estimated $64.5 billion, by far the most expensive project of its kind. Its locks are planned to be 510 meters long, 77 meters wide and 27 meters deep, making them much larger than those in the Panama Canal. These dimensions would allow the mega canal to accommodate enormous container ships and bulk carriers that the Panama Canal can't handle today. But building this canal is no easy task. Funding has been a major hurdle. A Chinese company, HKND, was once a key backer, but has since abandoned the project, and no new major investors have stepped forward. Without solid financial support, the canal remains stuck in planning. Then there's the environmental cost. The canal would pass through some of Central America's most sensitive ecosystems, including Lake Nicaragua, the largest freshwater lake in the region. Experts warn that this could disrupt local biodiversity, harm wildlife and even impact water supplies. On top of that, tens of thousands of people could be displaced, raising serious concerns about land rights and fair compensation. Despite these challenges, the Nicaraguan government is still pushing for the project. A new route has been proposed, but experts remain skeptical. They point to the unresolved environmental, financial and logistical issues and question whether this canal is even viable. Right now, the mega canal is more of a bold idea than a reality. If it ever gets built, it could challenge the Panama Canal's dominance and reshape global trade. But with so many obstacles in the way, its future is anything but certain. Is Nicaragua like those racing teams watching from the sidelines, full of potential, but not ready to get its car on the track? While these are the main alternatives in place, several others are emerging as potential contenders. Panama itself is working on a land-based alternative with its proposed rail and truck corridor. 
Known as the Land Bridge, this project aims to connect the Atlantic and Pacific coasts without relying on Gatun Lake's water reserves. With a capacity to handle up to 5 million containers annually by 2045, the Land Bridge is designed to reduce strain on the canal during peak demand and droughts, serving as a backup option for shippers. In Honduras, plans for an interoceanic railway are taking shape. This railway would link Amapala on the Pacific coast to Puerto Castilla on the Caribbean, with a sub-branch connecting to El Salvador's port of La Union. Supported by trade agreements with China, this project highlights the growing interest in rail infrastructure to move goods efficiently across Central America. Maritime alternatives also remain in play. The Northwest Passage, once blocked by Arctic ice, is becoming more viable due to climate change offering the shortest route between the North Pacific and North Atlantic. Do you think these are serious contenders in the race to replace the Panama Canal? But the Panama Canal Authority, ACP, isn't ready to let go of its golden goose just yet. They're rolling out a mix of short-term fixes and long-term upgrades to keep the canal running smoothly and secure its place in global trade. At the heart of their long-term strategy is the Indio River Dam project, a $1.6 billion investment to build a new reservoir. This project is designed to secure enough water to support a minimum of 36 daily transits, even during severe droughts. Expected to be completed by 2030 to 2031, the ACP is currently working on relocating affected communities and addressing their rights to move the project forward. In the short term, operational changes are already in motion. The ACP has also introduced a new booking system, limiting each customer to one slot per day to improve efficiency. To conserve water, the canal's new locks now use 7% less water per transit, and additional conservation measures are already showing positive results. Financially, the Panama Canal remains strong despite the challenges. In 2024, revenue reached $4.99 billion, with net profits climbing by 8% to $3.45 billion. Will these upgrades be enough to keep the Panama Canal ahead in the race for global trade dominance? The future of global trade is shifting, and the Panama Canal is at a crossroads. With ambitious alternatives on the horizon and the canal's own upgrades underway, the question remains. Can the Panama Canal hold on to its crown, or is the world ready for a new leader? Which contender do you think has the best chance to replace the Panama Canal and win the race? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Mega Build stories.